love Jesus? Yes. yes. Somebody love Jesus? Yes. You can't speak for the person next to you. So what about you? You love Jesus? Yes. Are we excited about what God's going to do tonight? Yes. Let me ask it this way. Are you excited about what God's going to do in you? Yes. Not the person next to you across the room in you. Tonight is my night to receive what God has for me. I'm not the only one, right? Tonight is my night to receive what God has for me. Would you please stand on your feet tonight? Let's worship Jesus. But Father, we welcome you in this place. Let the Spirit of God be mightily in this house tonight, God. Not just in a in wordage, but in action. And indeed, we receive what the Spirit of God has for us right now. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, God, we put aside the things of today. We put aside all the, the thoughts and the things that went right, the things that went wrong, the phone calls, the texts that we got that, that didn't go according to plan. God, we set all that aside right now. And we put our focus upon the living word of life, the living word of glory, the Lord who is strong and mighty, the one who is zealous and his name is beautiful. God, we put our focus and our attention upon you right now. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus. Jesus. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like Jehovah.
Jesus is lifted high. We 
lift our voice It's the year of Jubilee Out of sight to you I said behold He comes Riding on the clouds Shining bright Oh yeah At the trumpet call Salvation comes through the name of Jesus and no other. I don't know what you're going through tonight, but I'm here to tell you the name of Jesus is bigger than your problem, than your circumstance. It doesn't matter what a doctor has to say. The name of Jesus is greater than sickness, it's greater than disease, it's greater than failure, it's greater than divorce. His name is above your situation. And tonight we step into the authority that is ours and we receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, we agree with each other right now. The prayers of the saints in this place, Father, those that are crying out for direction concerning jobs and, and, and financial situation, we say yes and amen to the will of God. In a speedy manner. Not a belaboring out there to be yonder out somewhere down the road, God. We say let it be done even tonight. Move on hearts that need to be moved, oh God. Let compassion run where compassion is needed. Let their name come to the top of the list. Let the doors of opportunity be opened. Father, we declare over each other tonight, yes and amen to the will of God of healing and deliverance. We lift our voice in praise and honor to the name of Jesus. Our salvation comes from Zion's hill. The blood that flowed in Zion, it's still crying out forgiveness. It's still crying out mercy. It's still crying out, there's a way to the Father. And we come boldly before the throne of grace and mercy even right now. I declare to you tonight, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like 
not about religion. Come on, Jesus. Church, receive it. I'm telling you, receive it. Receive the life of God. Be renewed on your innermost being. Let the rivers of living water come bubbling up. Let it bubble up from deep down deep. Let that cool refreshing of heaven bubble up from inside of you. And take a drink of the living waters of life. From the wellspring that's flowing from the throne of God. The same Holy Spirit that brooded over the face of the deep in Genesis 1. Is the same one who's inside of you right now. Rivers, come forth. We uncap the wells, God, that have been capped off by hurts, by yesterdays, by the pains of life, by lies and deceit and deception of men. Uncap the wells, God. Unthrow the caps off the wells. Let the caps of the wells be thrown off and let it bubble up deep, refreshing wind of heaven. Calling forth water. Let it come into the valley of the dry bones, God. Let the waters fill up the valley. As we bask in the light of the sun of heaven, let the sinews come back. Let the strength come back to the, those who are weary. Where the, the hands hang weak and the knees are feeble, God, we receive strength in our bodies. In our innermost being, we receive strength in our spirit, man, tonight. We are strengthened in the Holy Spirit. Jesus, breathe on your people. Life everlasting. Mm. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, fire of God, fuego de Dios en la sangre de Cristo. Moto a rojo takatifu kuapuana. Fire of the Holy Spirit. In whatever language you want to declare it, it's the fire of God we need. It's what it strengthens us on the inside. We are renewed on the inside by the fire of the presence of God. When they came into the temple and they went into the holy place and they went, the high priest would go into the holies of holy. He entered in with the presence of the glory of God And you and I have access right now to that same presence. We receive from the glory of God. People often ask, how come we're losing our children? Because we didn't bring them up in the glory. Because when you bring them up in the glory of God, nothing else will do. See those, those children of Israel out there in that wilderness wandering around all those years. There came a time when those children were being born in the wilderness. And all they knew was the fire by night and the cloud by day. They didn't know anything else. They didn't know there was a different way. When they crossed over into the, to the land of promise, if the Spirit of God didn't go with them, they didn't know what to do because that's all they had ever known was the presence of God. And when we raise our children in the presence of God, the presence of God will keep them. It's not about our programs. It's not about our little candies and our what we can do to attract somebody. It's about the fire of God attracting somebody. It's about the Spirit of God drawing people to repentance. Father, we ask you right now in this neighborhood and in this region, God, over our families and co-workers, over our neighbors, we ask you, God, that the fire of God ignite in hearts. We ask you for the lost. We ask you for a revival in the lost. We're not asking for church folk, God. We don't want a transfer of growth. We want new growth. That harvest that's dying on the vine, God. We're asking you to send for laborers. The same way in, in Matthew you told them to ask the Lord of the harvest to raise up laborers in the field of harvest. The end of chapter 9 of Matthew, the beginning of chapter 10. 
And he called them to him and sent them out into the field of harvest. So God, I'm asking you that each one of my brothers and sisters in this room, that the commission of heaven would come upon them. That they would receive the commission of God to go into the fields of labor and labor in the fields. And not one soul would be lost to hell that's in our field. Even as right now the cotton is, is becoming ready to peak and the farmers are beginning to pick it and things are happening. But if a storm comes, the cotton is lost in the field. God, we ask you that the, that the, that the fruit not be lost in the field. That hell would not receive one of those who are supposed to be in heaven. The one of our generations, not one of our time, not one in our field of harvest, God. We're asking you in the field of harvest, God, that the angels, the reapers, God, we're asking you as we work alongside the ministry flames of fire, the angels of God, we work with heaven. And we're asking you for a harvest of souls. Souls, God. to go out and do it again tonight. We're asking you for conviction, God. Yes. To convict hearts. Yes. Yes. The drug addict with the needle stuck in his arm, God, and he's about to OD, we're asking you for mercy. Yes. Yes. We're asking you, God, for mercy. Pull our government officials, we're asking you for mercy, God. Pull our governors and our senators and our congressional leaders, mercy, God. Those who are doing things that should not even be mentioned right now, God. We're asking you, God, for conviction in their hearts. We're asking you, God, for a revival among the Ivy League schools. Where revival used to be, when those schools were started, they started out revival. They started with the right, the right motives and the right heart. And they were raising up leaders and missionaries and pastors. Father, we're asking you right now in those libraries as those students are studying, Father, that, that one of them would get a Bible somehow and they would go to that shelf and get a Bible and they start reading it and revival break out in the Ivy League schools among the children of the congressional leaders. Father, we're asking you to do a mighty work in our country. We're standing in the gap. Come on, church, let's pray. We're standing in the gap. We're standing in the gap for our president. We're standing in the gap for our congressional leaders. For the, for the for the leaders of our, our national of our armies, God, we stand in the gap for them and we ask you, Holy Spirit of living God, move in their hearts. We don't know their motives. We don't know why they are where they are, God, but we, we honor them and we ask you, heaven, use them for your glory. Stir the hearts of kings. Move the hearts of leaders, of governors, of mayors. Of our policemen, God, we ask you even right now, move the hearts of these that seems impossible to move. In the name of Jesus. In our army of the Holy One of Israel. In our pastors and apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers. Stir our hearts. Do not leave us to our own devices, God. But we ask you to raise up a men and women who will not be bought by American money. Who will not be bought by titles and decrees of men. But they will not bow their knee to the gods of America. But they will set themselves aside for the purposes of the glory of God. Raise up our children and our children's children for the purposes of the king of kings. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Jesus, be magnified. Be glorified. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, do we love Jesus tonight? Yes. Yeah. Jesus, you can stand, you can sit, it don't bother me, whatever you want to do. Jesus.
Jesus. Will you agree right now in the name of Jesus? Yes, Lord. 
We agree right now. Let it be done according to the word of the Lord. The flames of revival are quickening. Father, those children, I can't get off of this. If you, you were in a marriage and you had a stepdaughter, stepson, and that marriage is now gone, but there was a relationship with that child, and there's still a, a tugging in your heart over that, I'm going to agree with you right now that God will do amazing things in their lives. That makes sense? Amen. Let's agree right now, and let's call it forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church, are you here tonight? Come on, let's stand in the gap. These things matter to some of us. Let's stand in the gap together, and let's believe for the awakenings of God over those who call us daddy. Over those who called us mama. Over those who called us grandfather. Grandmother. Dad and papa. Father, we declare the word of the Lord over their lives. That they will live in the things of God and not die. And the enemy that is trying to snuff out their life even right now. We say no in the name of Jesus. And yes to the spirit of God. Father, over our friends. That have children. That for whatever reasons. They're our friends. But their children have pretty much disowned them. And they don't know what to do. We stand with them that are not even in this room. Are you here with me church? Yeah. Well, some of us we got friends that are going through things. And they don't know what to do. Their, their daughters have, have turned on them. And, and they, they, they're just. It's evil. And they go to church and they act like things are good, but it's evil. It's not of God. Father, we ask you for the conviction of heaven and the turning of hearts right now in the name of Jesus. We stand together in unity of faith and purpose. That the purposes of God call forth in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. receive the revelation of the fire of the presence of God. Come on fire. Come on fire. Rise up. Burn in our hearts. Awakening to groanings that we can't even utter. Re release Holy Ghost. Some of you used to be radical in speaking and some used to be just aggressive in it and you let something keep you back and I'm asking you, God, call it back for them, my brothers and sisters. Let the awakenings of those bubblings of deep crying out, those groanings and yearnings that you can't even contain, come forth in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, fire! Holy Ghost, fire of God. Presence. 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 Glory. 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 Church, let's pray. Come on, church, pray. Let's stand in the gap for them. 
If you don't know, just pray for missionaries. Pray for indigenous pastors, those local leaders and Sunday school teachers, those that don't have anybody to stand in the gap for them. something different, okay? Yeah. We're going to read one verse right here. It's a thing, it's two verses. We're not going to preach, but we're going to read a verse out of Revelation. Yes. Chapter 3. We're going to let God do something different. I believe in following the Holy Ghost. This is not about Jason. This is not about Brother Gerald. This is not about this local body. It's about the kingdom of God. We just happen to be in this local body's facility right now. 
But we all part of the same body, aren't we? If he splits that sky right now, are we all out of here? Or is it just this local body out of here? Huh? We out of here, right? If he comes back right now, and that trumpet goes to sounding, he's out of here. Y'all can stay if you want to. I'm gone. See ya. Drop the microphone. Jesus, Revelation chapter 3. We know these verses in here in chapter 2 and 3 that the angels of God are saying to the churches, right? To the angel of the church of Sardis, Jesus is saying to the angel of the church of Sardis, what are you going to write? These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. And I'm not teaching on this tonight, but I believe it's in Isaiah 11, it talks about the seven spirits of God, the spirit of wisdom, and spirit of knowledge, spirit of revelation, seven of them. I mean, yeah, they're all listed right in there. But right now, he's saying, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God, the seven stars, I know your, what's the next word? Your deeds or your works, depending on what version you're reading. I know your works. And that you have a name. That you are alive. I'll stop right there. He's telling this church right here. Look at it. There it is on the screen. To the angel of the church of Sardis right. These things say, he that hath the seven spirits of God, the seven stars, I know thy. That thou hast a name, that thou livest. Stop right there. Don't read that part that you're dead. Read the part that says you got a name. You know what that means? That means everybody knew them for doing something amazing in God. That's how everybody knew them. They had a name. What was their name? About their works that, they are, that they're doing. That they're doing great and mighty things in God. That was their name. Are you reading this right here? I'm not adding to it. I'm reading what's there. To the angel in the church of Sardis right. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God. The seven stars I know. I know what you're doing. And you got a name to everybody that says you're doing great and mighty things in God. That's what that verse says. You got a name that you're alive. You got a name that you're doing works. You got a name that you're doing amazing things in God. You got a name. And a lot of us in this room, we've been fighting for that. We've been fighting for We got a name. We're doing the works of God. And our name says we're alive. But God says to this church, but you are. In this region, whatever local body you go to, okay, whatever facility you call your home church. I'm not being judgmental. I'm not doing anything, but I am looking at fruit. And we'll know them by their and when my fruit says, and listen to me, do not be offended at me, but when my fruit says I've got to have all of this to have the presence of God, it's a lie. Come on. That's right, man. Come on. When my fruit says I've got to have lights and I've got to have fog machines and I've got to have somebody with a DR period behind their name in order to have the presence of God, it's a lie. That's right. Yeah. What you got to have to have the presence of God is a heart that's hungry. And when a heart is hungry for the presence of God, you know what we're going to find? See, we came here for revival services because we need revival on the inside. Because there's areas of our hearts that we look alive, but there's areas inside of there that only you know and you say, you judge, I'm not judging, I'm telling you what God told me. You, you, you got works and you got a name that you're doing great things in God. You got a name. You've been going and doing. You've been writing. You've been, you've been, you've been on that, that, that book of faces. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That Facebook thing. We own it right now. I didn't look last night, but there's been about 300 to 400 people watching this thing every night. Okay. But on that thing, we look alive. 
on that thing, we look like we've got something going on. We know how to copy and paste the right scriptures. We know how to take the right photo at the right time, show it us in the right country at the right place. Looks like we're doing great and mighty things. But Jesus says to this church, Are we here, church? But I'm not dead. Okay, let me ask you, what part of your heart has been offended by a past preacher that we have not yet let go of because we still talk about it? Because back in 1980-whatever, 1970-whatever, 1960-whatever, my grandmother's not here. I go back to the 50s and 40s. She's 92. But we go back, and you look back when there was opportunity of moves of God, and we go back and say, so-and-so stopped it. And it generally revolved around money. Rather than it got quiet on me. It generally revolved around money. And we look back and say, what should have happened didn't happen because of so-and-so and we name it. And you still have not let go of it. And when you don't let go of that, you're not going to get in what God's got today. Because we're still holding on to something that's dead. Amen. I honor our forebears. I honor the men and women that went before us. I honor them. The Smith Wigglesworth, the A.A. Allens, the Jack Coes, the, the Oral Roberts, the whoever you want to name, the, the Lindsays, the whoever you want to name, the, even the ones that are still their legacy. But you know what? Everybody I just named is gone. Their work it's done. Yeah. We know them as great men of God. We know them as women of God. Mariah Wood with Edder. We know them as a mighty woman of God who walked in amazing things. Brother Lawrence, you can keep going. Keep going. And you go all the way back to Paul. The apostles, all 12 of the apostles. They're all gone. But I'm looking at you. The work that they did is still alive. The wisdom, they're gone. You say, well, I believe that that, that that power that they walked in died when they died. I agree, it sure did. But it's alive today in those who still believe. Amen. Because I run into that a lot. I believe that, you know, when the early apostles say walked in stuff that, that was special, and it was special. But so do I. Amen. Amen. It's special gifts. Amen. By the special Holy Ghost. Amen. The church, we got to come out of that which is dead. Yes. Right. Amen. The yesterdays, that which is holding us back because we've got a name. A lot of us in this room. You are known as somebody who's trying to love Jesus. Right? Yeah. Am I not looking at a lot of people in this room who, who are doing striving to love Jesus? Yeah. But deep down inside, you know the truth. We know the areas that backbiting and that dissension and Division. Division over doctrine. But we can't work with them because of. You're telling me we're dead. What you're telling me. We've got a name that we're alive. I need you to search your heart right now for those areas inside of you. That somebody said something in the past, they lied, they deceived you, they did this, they did that. A, a, a relationship went south, somebody, somebody did something they should not have done. And all across this room, right where you're sitting, we're going to let it go. We're going to let it go.
We're going to let it go. And we're going to let God awaken us. Because we're going to be known as people who did mighty works. We're going to be known as people who's got something going on that we're alive. And God's going to know us as alive and not dead. Because we're going to let go of that dead part and move into the living world. I know this is different. This is not what a lot of us came for, but listen to me. We're going to follow the Spirit of God, some of us. If you're willing. If there's something that God has convicted you on, then I ask you right now, right there where you are, get it right with God. Confess it out your mouth. This is your part. you got to open your mouth and let it out of you. You tell God, I don't want to hold on to this anymore. That relationship, that man that did me wrong, he did my children wrong, he did me this way, they did me that way, they took all my money, my, even my own parents, they stole from me, God. My nephew came and, 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 he, and he got my, my, my ladder and I still have never forgiven him. I forgive him, I release him. Release them right now. You want God to forgive you, you got to forgive Telling you all across this room right here, release them. Let's go a step further. Some of you need to release God. Somebody died, something happened, and you didn't understand it, you got upset at God. You need to forgive God. You follow me? Let it go. And trust Him. I don't have those answers for you. But what I do have is the love of Jesus. Receive the refreshing of the love of Christ. Father, all over this room, I ask you, let the deepness of the love of Jesus arise in our hearts. Let it wash over us through the authority of the blood of Jesus, the cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb. Over our children and our grandchildren, we plead the blood of Jesus. Over that which has been dead, God, we ask you to breathe life. Over areas that we wouldn't take our grubby little hands off of it and it died, we ask you to breathe life. Through the authority of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, do a work that only you can do. Church, if you're in this place and there is something in your life you've been asking God to restore that you know there's no way you can physically do it. Let's believe right now that even this week we will start hearing reports about what God has done. So there was a lady two years ago in Kenya. She came to a Saturday night meeting a crusade she had been hurt and offended in a church and she had left the church because she was offended at something the pastor had done she came on that field and she rededicated her life to God 19 years ago her husband had abandoned her and left her 19 years she had been living by herself and raising those children She came that Saturday. She rededicated her life to Jesus. She went home. Sunday morning, she woke up. There's a knock at the door. Her neighbor's standing there. And her neighbor tells her, says, your husband has been gone for almost 20 years. Has come back and he's out in the forest chopping down trees to build you a new house. That day, God restored that marriage after 19 years. Today, two years later, they're in a church, they're serving God, and their marriage is strong because somebody held on to the promises of God and they believed when there was no hope. Over there, when I ask for people to come forward and let's, let's pray, if you've got lost family members, Hundreds of people will come forward and they're not talking about lost in the form of they need salvation. 
They're talking about they're lost and they don't know where they are. And they come forward weeping and we pray in the name of Jesus. And we have seen God do so many, so many times. The longest one I know of is 16 years. Somebody had been missing. Things had happened and they got separated from each other. And after 16 years, we prayed. And within two days, the telephone rings and they come home. Because God can do what only God can do. You made a mess of things, but God can restore in one moment. We believe right now that we will see those grandbabies again. Even that, that, that relationship where because they don't like who you married, they don't want them to be around your new. You follow me? It is God that restores that stuff. Because only God can do what God can do. But we release them right now. That pain, that stuff that we're holding on to that's killing us on the inside because we don't know what to do about it. Father, we give it to you right now. That which is causing death in our own hearts, we give it to you right now. We release it and we forgive. Our brother that tried to steal our inheritance, our, our, our sister that tried to steal that, that the ones that moved in on our, on our inheritance, God, we release them right now. See, even in, in my own family, we have to do this. See, I have to walk this out. My wife and I have to walk this out. We release them and we forgive them. If we let God be our defender. You hear church? Would you stand on your feet tonight? And let's sing the blood of Jesus. And let's declare the blood of Jesus over our situation. Over that which is in our life. That, that appears to be alive to everybody around us. But you know the truth. Let's release it and let's ask God for renewing inside of us. Some of you, you got giftings and callings in you that you've squelched, that you've pushed down because you got hurt, because you stepped out there and the pastor you was under slapped you on the wrist and you got offended and you stepped back and you never come right back out again. I'm calling you back out. I'm calling you out tonight. I'm telling you, let the giftings of God and the stirrings and the dreams of God be awakened in you right now. I would like you to say this with me. God, awaken the dreams and the callings in my heart. I'm telling you, come on, say it with me. God, awaken the dreams and the callings inside of me. Awaken the dreams inside of me again and let me live. Some of you is about to, you're starting to feel something inside of you. You haven't felt a long time. Let it come on. Let it come on. Breathe it in. 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 The giftings of God, let it rise in this place. The dreams and the visions, the impartation of men and women of God of days gone by that laid their hands on you and they spoke things inside of you. Let it come up right now. I know this is different if you're here and you're married. Would you please get with your husband or wife? Would you get with your husband or wife right now? If they're here. If they're not here, that's going to be hard to do, right? But by faith, we're going to stand together. Because the thing about it is, what we're talking about is not just you. It's you and your wife. It's you and your husband. What we're talking about right now is the renewing and call it forth. So if you're here and your husband or wife is not here, then we're going to believe that God's going to do inside of them where they are right now. Are you with me, church? Yeah. Okay? Just call it forth. 
We stir it up to remembrance. The dreams, the giftings, the callings of God, we stir to remembrance right now. We stir to remembrance inside of us the giftings and the callings and the wooings of the heart of God. Father, over our spouse or wherever they may be right now, we declare the life of God over them. We declare the love of Jesus. Let it rise up inside of them right now. Father, we declare life in the name of Jesus. We declare the life of God in the name of Jesus over these marriages. Over these that are single. Father, we declare the life of God. And we declare that that which was purposed before the foundations of the earth, that they would walk in and fulfill what God has for them to fulfill. Amen. Jesus. Over the widows, that the husband of the Lord Jesus, that is their husband, would watch over the widows. That he would perform his word over their lives. That they, they are not less than because they're a widow or a widower. God, I ask you, be mighty in the widows and the widows. God, we ask you, over the singles, over the marrieds, over, the, over those that are divorced, we ask you, let our God arise and let our enemies be scattered. Father, we ask you, let the dreams and the impartations of who you are be re realized and fulfilled. Those that have the calling of God over their lives to preach the gospel. That have yet to walk in it and step into it. Let it be done, Holy Ghost. Jesus, we stir to remembrance. If you're in this place. There was a time in your life when you used to walk in something and, and you got offended for whatever reason and you had to pull back and you want God to restore that calling inside of you and that gifting inside of you, I need you to come up here with me tonight. If you're here and you know the call of God is on your life to preach the gospel, and I'm not talking about necessarily standing in front of a pulpit, but you know there's something on you that you get to step into, would you come up here with me and let's pray right now. We're going to ask God to awaken inside of us what we don't even realize is the fullness is there. And where the enemy has tried to destroy it, I'm telling you, come on. Come on, there's more here. Come on, let's let the Spirit of God awaken inside of us. It doesn't matter to me if it's a child, if it's a man or a woman. If you're in this place and you know there's a call of God on your life and you yet to step into it, come up here with me. Let's, let's let the Holy Ghost Impart something. Come on. I know you're here. Holy Ghost. I know you're my kids. But if God's dealing with you, would you stay back here? Jesus. Jesus. Holy Ghost. Church, we want to walk in and fulfill what God has for us. We're going to be mighty in our God. We ain't going back down. So we're going to get some grit and some anointing of the Holy Ghost.